Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, minimize the maximum difference of pairs. The problem states that you are given a zero indexed integer array nums and an integer p. You need to find p pair of indices such that the maximum difference among all the pair is minimized. Also, you need to ensure that no index appears more than once among all the p pairs, right? So, for example, let's say this is the array and p is 2. So you have to select two pairs, right? Now, there are various possible ways to select two pairs. One possible way would be you select first pair is 0, 0,1, second pair is 2, 3. This is one possible way to select two pairs. Second possible ways could be 0, 0,2 and uh, 1, 4. This is another possible way, right? And there are like multiple possible ways. Now, among all the possible ways, you will find out the maximum difference among all the pair. And whichever pair, whichever set of two pairs give you the minimum value, that would be your answer. So for example, let's say you select one pair, 1, 4 and 2, 5, right? So now if you, the value, the maximum difference among all the pairs, what would be the value for this? The value for this would be max of nums1 minus nums4 and nums2 minus nums5, right? And this value would evaluate to max of 0, 0,1, which is 1. So what does it mean? It means that for the pair 1, 4 and 2, 5, the difference, maximum difference is 1. Similarly, you will find this maximum difference for all possible two pairs. And for the one which will give you the minimum value would be your answer. So in this particular example, none of the pairs will give you a value less than equal, less than one. Hence, one is the answer, right? So hope the problem statement is clear. Now, if you are following this channel for some time, this kind of problem is uh, something that we have discussed a lot of times in the past. So if you haven't tried this problem yourself, I would strongly encourage you to pause the video right away and try to think of the solution by yourself first. I would, uh, for the people who are new to the channel, I would link the playlist in the description down below. Uh, make sure to check that out. We have solved multiple problems of this kind in the past. Uh, after watching this video, you can just uh, uh, pick any problem from that playlist and try to solve those problems by yourself. Uh, you will get much more better understanding of this, of the algorithm that is being used here. So with that, let's get started. So firstly, we have to find the minimum difference among all the p pairs, right? So first thing to note here is the array, order of elements in the array doesn't matter, right? So as always, if order of element doesn't matter, we will simply sort the array, right? And work with the sorted array because working on a sorted array, most of the time is easier than working with an unsorted array. Right, so let's just sort the array, and this is our new sorted array which we will work with. Now, we have to select p pairs and we have to finally return the minimum difference. Right now, what is the minimum possible difference uh, that you can get? Zero, right? Because the difference is defined as modulus of uh, a, com a minus b, so the minimum value of this modulus, modulus can be zero. Right. So if zero is something which is possible, then you will return zero as an answer. Right. So what does it mean by possible? Basically, we are saying that if we are able to select two pairs such that the difference between maximum difference between these two pairs is zero, then zero is our answer. If that is not possible, you will try with one because one is the next uh, best answer. So you say, okay, if maximum difference between two pairs can be one or not. If it is, you will return one as answer. Otherwise, you will try with two, right? And so on and so forth, right? So now for so like for the for each of these, what we are trying to get find, but it we are trying to find that whether maximum difference of x is possible or not, right? Now this is our reduced problem. Now we have to just return true or false. We have to say that okay, is maximum difference of x possible or not? So what does this mean? This means that let's say you have selected p pairs and you, you have taken maximum among all of them. This maximum should be less than equals to x, right? If you think about it closely, 
each of these value also should be less than equals to x right why because if any of these value is greater than x we are taking maximum am among all those values right so because we are taking maximum the result would come out as greater than x which we don't want so that's why we can just uh, say that okay we have to find two pairs such that the difference between each of those two pair is less than equals to x right that is our new motive now how to uh, do this let's say x is 1 for an example so what we are saying is we have to find two pairs such that difference between each pair is 1 so let's take the first element and try to pair up with something now in this particular case where x is 1 you can afford pairing this one with one or pairing this one with two both are uh, possible because the difference in both the case would be less than equals to one which is something we you want but which one of these two will you choose the answer is you will choose always the adjacent element now why uh, i would encourage you to again pause the video and try to think yourself before jumping ahead so notice that let's say you uh, you say that okay this this pair is not good let's just assume this so you are saying that this pair is good and you have you have paired with one one this with two now this one needs to be paired up with something let's say and the choice the best choice of this one would be this three right because anything after than three uh, after three would give you a greater difference value because that is sorted right so the best choice for this one would be this three now what you are getting you are getting one pair with difference of 2 you are getting one pair with difference of 1 can you do better answer is yes notice that you are pairing up this one with 3 but if you have paired up this 2 with 3 this will definitely give good answer then what you have gotten by pairing up this one because 2 and 3 are adjacent in the sorted array right so the difference between 2 and 3 will always be smaller than or equals smaller than equals to any pair which is before 2 right because all those pair would be smaller than 2 and uh, and hence the difference would be greater so that's why what you can say that if we instead of this if we would have paired this one with this adjacent one and instead of this if we would have paired this two with adjacent three then we would got a much better result and in, in this case you can see as well here the difference is zero right and uh, uh, sorry so here the difference is the first difference is zero and second difference is one which is much better than what we have previously previously the first difference was one second difference was two right so hope this point makes sense basically what we are saying is because adjacent pair will always give you the minimum possible difference you will always try to pick adjacent pairs nothing else because what you want at the end is uh, that every pair is minimized not just the first pair right so that's why we are taking we are blindly taking adjacent pairs while pairing up any element right now in this case we paired up this one with one and because now one one element can only belong to one pair because of this constraint we have like we have this this element is gone and this element is also gone now you have to try two and again for two what you will pair you will pair up with pair up two with three so again this element is gone and this element is gone now what about seven seven you will pair up with 10 now is this pair good the difference here is 3 which is greater than 1 so this pair is not good so you will you will not take 7 at all like you will not pair up 7 at all and you will try other element so let's say you now will try pairing 10 so let's say there is there was one more element 11 here so in this case you have paired up this 10 with 11 and that this would be a valid pair right so hope you got the intuition what we are doing is we are just trying to find out how many pairs can we make by following this condition and we have simplified the definition of pairing by saying that we will always pair up with adjacent elements 
now we can def we can find out how many pairs we are getting at the and at the end we will just compare it number of pairs that we got is that equals to uh, like is that greater than equals to 2 or not if it is then answer is yes basically we can form we can select p pairs such that the difference between all those p pairs is less than equals to x otherwise answer is no right so how would the pseudo code look like pseudo code would be very similar we have to figure out whether x is possible or not right so what we will do simply figure out how many pairs we can form so we will start from i equals to 0 and go up to i minus 2 because um, you have to pair up this element with the next element so n minus 1 or the last element can't be paired up with anything so that's why we are going only up to n minus 2 now for each of these elements we will try to pair up with the next element i plus 1 and i right and if this pair is good then we will take this pair right and also increment i now why we are incrementing i because we are given that one element can belong to only one pair and because we have paired up i plus 1 and i now i plus 1 is also done in this case i we are currently processing i then we will process i plus 1 but because we have processed i and i plus 1 both we incremented i so that next time this for loop will try to process i plus 2 right so after this for loop what we will have we will have the total number of pairs that satisfies this criteria uh, itself now if number of pairs is actually greater than equals to p will return true otherwise will return false right now what is the like this if you remember this was a this was one of the shorter version of the original problem original problem was not this original problem was something else so original problem was uh, we have to find the minimum differences and what we have said is okay we will try with difference of zero basically we'll call is possible with x equals to zero if this returns true then zero is the answer if it if it returns false we will try with one basically we'll try is possible one if is possible one is true one is the answer if it's false then we'll try two if this returns true this is the answer otherwise this is false so what is the time complexity here first of all time complexity of is possible is order n because we are iterating over the entire array once right and notice that this uh, function assume that array is already sorted so you can already sort the array beforehand that would take you order n log n time now this is possible is of order n complexity and we are calling is possible as long as we are not getting our answer right now what is the maximum answer that you can get maximum answer could be 10 to the power 9 right because let's say there are only two elements 0 and 10 to the power 9 and you are asked to find one pair so in that case maximum answer would be 10 to the power 9 so you will go all the way up to 10 to the power 9 so what would be the complexity complexity would be 10 to the power 9 into n right this would be your total complexity which would surely not pass right so which of these two factor you would want to remove you want to remove this factor now how would you remove this factor or basically what this factor means this means that you can't iterate over all possible answers uh, in a linear fashion so the first thing that you should that should come to your mind here is uh, we are doing a linear search here so is it possible to do binary search here or not so for those who are new like i have recorded a complete video explaining binary search uh, from scratch if you don't understand what binary search is you i would link that video in description down below or somewhere in the top right i section you can watch this video as well so just to give a recap uh, what binary search denotes that let's say you are given some sample space right and you have to figure out which uh, of these would be your answer or which is the first uh, turning point so in this particular case let's say this is uh, you selected the you selected an array and you divide the array into half now if you are able to say that i will be able to skip either the left or the right half completely then binary search is applicable right so if you are deterministically able to say this then you can apply binary search in this particular case the function is whether let's say this is x right and this returns let's say true right now if it if it returns true then 
what does it mean? It means that a difference of x or is possible, right? If a difference of x is possible, do you need to search in any of these values? The answer is no. Because if we are saying that difference of x is possible, so it means difference of x plus 1 is also possible, right? Similarly, x plus 2 is also possible. Similarly, x plus 3 is also possible. So you can simply skip going in the right completely and you can only search in the left half, right? Similarly, let's say if x is false, uh, like if it is possible of x is false. So in this case, what you will do, you will say that, okay, difference of x is not possible. So anything less than x is also not possible, right? Basically, you are saying that you can't find p pairs such that each of those p pairs is less than has difference less than less than equals to x. So it means any you can't find any number before x that could satisfy those p pairs as well. So you can simply skip going in the left half and you will only search in the right half, right? So basically you are able to deterministically say whether to go left and right at every point and hence you can apply binary search you can convert this linear search into binary search and this 10 to the power 9 factor would then become log of 10 to the power 9 factor and the complexity uh, like log of x x would be 10 to the power 9 and complexity would be n log x and this would pass the given time constant right so I would strongly encourage you to code this problem by yourself first before jumping into the code. Next, we will look into the actual code. So the code is simple. Uh, we are doing binary search here. Like we have first sorted the array because that is required uh, for our logic of adjacent pairing works. So we first sort the array and then we do a binary search. We simply figure out the mid. We check if M is possible or not. If it is possible, it means we don't need to search in the right half at all. So currently we are searching in L comma R and we are saying that M is possible. So we don't need to search in the right half and we can only search in L comma M. So we just uh, reduced our R to M. Similarly, if is possible of M return false, it means we don't need to search anything in the left. So we can simply search in the range M plus one to R. So we just made our L to M plus one, right? So what does is possible has is possible is exactly similar to pseudo code that we have looked uh, we'll just iterate over the array once up till n minus 2 or n minus 1 whatever you say and we simply try to pair up the adjacent elements if they they form a valid pair like they have the difference less than equals to diff if that's the case we will make that pair and after all the after we get all the number of pairs that we can form we can simply uh, check whether the number of pairs is greater than or equals to the required pairs or not. If it is, we return true, otherwise we return false, right? So hope this entire solution makes sense. Now, one, one small follow-up that you should try out yourself is, the problem states that you don't, you are not allowed to pick one index more than once, right? So let's say you are now allowed to pick more than once then what would be the solution? The solution would not be that difficult. So I would encourage you to try that particular version of the problem yourself. And uh, we can discuss the solution in the comment section below if you want, right? So hope you enjoy the solution. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.